Hello and welcome to another edition of Diaspora Weekly. My name is Jermaine Enkroma. I am joined by, you know, I always say amazing, but let me tell you, uh, it, 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 just, it just seems like it gets better from here. One, uh, one guest, then it gets to another, and you wait. When I tell you who he is, you know he's a definition of amazing. But as usual, before we go and meet my guests, I want to go to the jungle. But first, this drink, you know, purple is actually not my favorite color. My favorite color is blue, but this one looks, it matches it very well. Uh, Specialize, something else. Specialize is one the best in the market right now. And we want to thank Specialize for sponsoring our event, some for sponsoring our show. Um, but we're going to go to the jungle, and then when we come back, you'll meet my amazing guest. So today's jungle, I want to keep it very, very simple. I'm not going to read you any statistics, nothing. I just want a word to the African in the diaspora watching. You know, we have Africans who travel the desert on foot to get to a point in North Africa and then cross the Mediterranean Sea, the risk associated with it. Uh, you see hundreds of them in the boat, sometimes it sink and we never see them again. But we take that chance. We get on a plane to go to Europe, we don't know what to expect. We take that chance. We go to America, China, we take that chance. And these are places that we have never been. But you know what? We take that chance because it's a risk. But we don't care about the risk, we take that risk. But once we get there and we've gotten comfortable and we're called upon to return home, we start to point out, oh, the roads are bad. Oh, uh, this problem, one problem or another. I don't get that part. At least these problems on the continent, you're already familiar with them. So you know how to navigate through them. So why is it so difficult for the diaspora? the African who live outside the continent, to come back home and help to develop the continent. Because they say it's too risky. Oh, I'll go there and my money will run out. And Didn't you think about that when you were going to China, United States, and all those places? You took that risk. Why wouldn't you want to take that risk coming back home? Today, that's Jermaine's angle. And so if you're listening, please, no matter what, I'm not telling you it's going to be rosy. It's some rough times here, but at the end of the day, it's your home. And when you get here, whatever the continent throws at you, it's not new. You're familiar with it, and you can navigate through it. So come back home, and let's help develop the continent. Today, that's the jungle. We'll return very soon to meet my amazing guests. first knowing exactly what the product was and how it could benefit you, definitely not. Neither should you vote for your next member of parliament without knowing who they are and how they plan to solve your problems. Watch the next MP only on Diaspora Network Television and find out the men and women who want to represent you in parliament. The next MP only on DNT. We wake up every morning to different stories from politics, business, sports, and entertainment. These stories, one way or the other, affect our lifestyle and dealings with family, friends, and business associates. Your take on Diaspora Network Television gives you an opportunity to have your take on these pertinent issues via phone in and messages to our social media platforms, DNT Ghana on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If it's an important trend and story, we will definitely talk about it. Your take with me, Yalsechi, coming soon on DNT.
Hello and welcome back. Today, I am actually very fortunate. Uh, this is one of those that you run into. I've been a fan for a long time. We watch his videos and we're amazed. He has like 411,000 followers, subscribers on YouTube. He's a YouTube phenom. And guess what? He is young. Please help me welcome Woody Meyer. <laughs> Woody. Yeah. They say we don't shake hands yeah, exactly, anymore. Exactly, so. exactly. You know, look, your story should be told many, many, many times. Yeah. Do you know why? Not only are you my youngest ever guest on Diaspora Weekly, for the time that, the, in a short time span, you've done some amazing stuff. Yeah. How did it all start? Uh, I would say that it's it's all boils down to hard work mm -hmm. and um, knowing what you're going in for. Because I was born in a village, okay? I was born in a village in Takrati, Ahinkofi. I don't normally say Ahinkofi to the Wait, world. A village in Takrati? A, a village in Takrati. No, a village in Takrati. Okay. Okay. Wait, I'm, no, I'm, not, I'm, not Takrati. Takrati. No, I'm not saying Takrati is a village. <laughs> you guys know that I love, I love that city, okay. but it's a village outskirts of okay, Takrati. Okay. All right. I was okay. born there okay. and um, I've never been anywhere. Okay. Like I was just literally living there. I lived uh -huh. all my life in Takrati. Okay. Until I had the chance to go abroad. Wow. Even it was a chance that my daddy wanted to block it by telling me, you know what? I was not the youngest, but I look so young. Uh, like I'm the third born, but I look so young. And my dad is like, no, you, you're so smallish to travel. Already my senior brother was abroad. My other senior brother, my second senior brother is also in KNUSD. I completed Bompe and I had KNUSD and UMAT because I applied both of them. And then I was like, you know what? I don't want to stay in Ghana. I don't want to school in Ghana. I really want to get out. And my dad is like, no, you have to go to tech. So I applied a scholarship in the UK, University of Greenwich, and I got a scholarship. But it was half scholarship. And half scholarship... You yes, to you got to pay the rest. 3,000 pounds. And uh, that's a lot of money for my dad to pay and tell him that you got to go to the UK to pay that amount of money. So he was like, you're not going anywhere. I still tried, but they refused me because my dad was not ready to give me that, um, you know, bank statement. Then I was still determined to leave the country. Wow. <laughs> and, and so why, why, why did he have to leave, leave so badly? You know, my, the brother that I followed, he was the first guy to enter university. Mm -hmm. So which means the senior brother was not in the university. Mm -hmm. So when this guy got Kwame Nkrumah invested, I felt like he was like a new god to the family. Mm -hmm. You know, like everybody was like, yo, everybody mm -hmm. was worshipping mm -hmm. him and all that. So I had a conversation with my senior brother. He, Which one? The, the eldest, you okay. know. He, he was actually crying, but crying to me alone. You understand? Crying, crying, like crying. Is that the one that was in abroad? The one in abroad right now, the one in Germany right okay. now. He, he was literally crying. Knowing that right now my parents don't respect him anymore because it's not like let me let me put it this way it's not like not respected but you graduated from high school and you're not in the university but the one that follows you and you know like living in a village everybody want to see their kids it's going to school and university. coming back yeah. and you are still there yeah. you see so it was something like all the love were kind of connected to the one that. Uh, 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 was a tech. Exactly. Right. So I felt like, no, why do I have to go and join him there? Even if I go there, that love will not be the same. He has already gotten the But attention. if you travel, mm -hmm. travel in your family had already been poo-pooed on because exactly. your, your brother that was in Germany yeah. said he wasn't respected. No, no, no. He wasn't, like the time I was talking to him, uh -huh. he, he was in Ghana. Okay, okay, okay. At the time that the you were The time talking. that I was talking to him, he was in Ghana. Okay. And my brother, the one... The, uh, that followed him. Yeah. Okay. So when this guy went to tech, mm -hmm. he also started like doing application and all that. And then he traveled. Okay. okay. You see. And then when he traveled, mm -hmm. I think the respect was becoming balanced. Okay. Uh, and I was like, you know what? I also have to leave. But we see <laughs> what you told me. Uh-huh. 
you you didn't want to follow footsteps because one of I the reasons uh -huh. that you didn't want to go to university is ah oh, somebody's already done that. It, but exactly. your brother has no, already my, also no. My brother left, uh -huh. but it was not like he graduated from school and then. Okay. He got there. Okay. He has to pass through so many channels. He okay. ha even had to win American lottery, and at the end of the day, he couldn't go to America. Okay. You know, you ha have to pass through so many channels. But me, I graduated from school, I go to school, and I left. So it was just one year interval. I never stayed home. Okay. Like, I graduated from high school, and I want to stay because people graduated from high school and stay home for so long. But for me, that instance, mm -hmm. after I graduated, I got my result, I wanted to leave. So, what drives you? Well, I mean, what's your driver? drives me as in what I do. What you yeah to do. It's just the do. people. Which people? The people that watch me. Okay. Y you understand? Those are the people that inspires me to do more of what I'm doing. Because what I'm doing I'll say I'll tell you that it takes a lot of money, it takes a lot of energy, it takes a lot of resources, but I don't want to give up because the people over there are ready to support what I'm doing. And the message is I mean reaching a lot of people. People actually coming to Africa, I would say that I've seen so many people visiting Africa for the first time because of my videos and you don't expect me to give up on that something one, like this. Right. Yeah. So, so when people watch your videos on YouTube, yeah. um, you go back and you read some of the comments. Exactly. Right? What, 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 what are some of the comments that have hit you the most? Um, that was when I saw a doctor who has never been to Africa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then he just wrote a comment and told me that because of you, mm -hmm. like literally I went to five countries in Africa mm -hmm. and I was actually sharing every single step. Like if I sleep in this hotel, I'll tell you that I slept in this hotel. And this man who I've never been to any country in Africa mm -hmm. wrote a whole comment on how he was following a young guy like me, my footsteps, sleeping in exactly the same hotel that I slept to all the five countries before he went back to America. So when oh, so he came, he basically followed you. It's a doctor in America. America, he's and in he Texas. He saw your videos. He saw my videos. Uh, is he African or South African? He's, he's an African American. Okay. And so he saw your videos. Exactly. Said, uh, which countries were those? I went to Ethiopia. Ethiopia. From Ethiopia to Rwanda. Uh -huh. From Rwanda to Tanzania. Uh -huh. Tanzania to Uganda. Uh -huh. And then Kenya. Okay. And this guy did exactly the same thing. Just the, like the same hotels exactly. that you slept. I, I, did, I didn't even believe it yeah. until he came to my Instagram. Okay. And started sending me all the pictures. Even I was on the lake, Lake Kivu. If you go mm -hmm. to Rwanda, they have a lake called Lake uh, Kivu. Uh, this guy actually also went there. He went there and said, you know what? What am I did this? And I've also done it. Wow. It, it, that, that is very inspiring. <laughs> yeah, a lot. Yeah. I have a lot of such um, messages. And mm -hmm. that was keeps me moving. Because okay. if a young guy like me, if I can inspire people to even visit the continent, invest in the continent, live in here, school in here, mm -hmm. that's something amazing. And you don't expect you to know, there is now. something called bravery. Okay. Um, when I was leaving Ghana, I think I was 22 years old. Yeah. You left Ghana when you were what? How? Old? I was 18. 18. Yeah. And you just got up and decided you're leaving. <laughs> and then I, when I go to China for the first time, I got lost. Well, how do you get lost going to China? <laughs> Did so, you end up in... <laughs> so, like, the first day that I landed in China... Mm -hmm. Okay, let me tell you this. When I go to Dubai, I use, like, Dubai to China. Mm -hmm. So when I go to Dubai, all of them refuse to check me in. Because they looked at me and I was like, where are your parents? Where are your mom and dad? You know? <laughs> Why are you here? You know? So they have to detain me. Really? Yeah. In Dubai? In Dubai. They had to talk to my parents. Are you sure you guys left? And then they checked my passport. Because like like I said, when I was, even right now, I look like, yeah. if you see my... When you're at the uh, time, I can when, only imagine. Ah, uh, my goodness. So these people are like, no. Where are your parents? You can't, we are not, we are not going to allow you to travel alone. You have to see your parents. Where are your parents? And, and then, then they see your they passport see my and passport they see and you're like, 18. Hey, are you sure you're 18? Are you sure this passport was not given you to me? Wow. And like, okay, I know where I'm going. Then I go to China. And in China, speaking Chinese, we can use X for S. Mm. And I was going to a city that is called S, and I used the word X. And it's the same name. Wow. So I, I flew from one city to another. You've got to be kidding uh, me. Oh, my goodness. A city that is like four hours, four hours away from where I was going. And you were going, you were supposed to report in school. In school. 
And so how do you rectify it? I got there. I landed. I got there, and then they said, "This is not where you're going," and I don't have any cash on me. Uh, I didn't, I at didn't 18. Have, at 18, I didn't have any cash on, and it was winter, you know. And I thought I bought the best jacket from Ghana, and it was just something you like know, this. <laughs> look, look, when 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 I hear you speak, when I hear you speak, eh, yeah, the stories are so similar. Wow. Me too. When I wanted to leave the country, my father did everything in his power to stop me. It didn't stop me. And me too, when I was flying from uh, Nigeria, Lagos, to East Berlin, mm. I thought I had bought the best jacket. jacket. <laughs> In fact, it was so hard, I put it on my, my hand. And so we arrived there, I threw, threw, I threw the jacket on. This was April in East Berlin. I exited the plane and I go, vroom. I had to go <laughs> back in the plane and zip up everything. And it still wasn't enough. Wow. So I can, and, and I was 20, what, at the time, I think 84, must have been 25 at the time. Wow. 18, 18. in a wrong city. Oh my goodness. In China. In China. You with a wrong jacket on. You don't speak no the language. Money. You don't speak the language. How is this man alive? <laughs> you don't speak the language. So what happened? So um, I started like trying to talk to them. I don't know what I was saying, but I was just trying to tell them that I'm lost. You know, so I called the school to talk to them, to tell them that this is not where I'm going. And then the school talked to them and said, how are you going to come? I don't have money. And the school said, they're going to pay for the ticket for me to come. When I come, then I pay. So that's when I managed to get from that city that to my main city, city. city and um when i got to my city like blood coming out from my nose because like you know i've been in the cold for so long and oh. um that was how my whole story in china started firstly because i realized i don't speak the language so i have to learn the language so it took me like three months intensive because i was not going to school so you speak the language very well? Very well. Like really? if you hear me speaking Chinese. How does Chinese? anyone, how do, you know, speaking the language is yeah. one thing. Yeah. But writing it, how does it make sense? You put things here uh, and it's supposed to mean something? Yeah, exactly. Because we they start teaching you how to write the strokes because everything is like a stroke. Mm -hmm. So we start writing a stroke from there. So the Chinese characters that you see, it's like four strokes or five strokes joining together to become mm -hmm. one word. Okay. It's like strokes. A stroke is like, a letter. A, a stroke is like a letter. Yeah. So like this one, you go that we have one that goes like this. And you just see the character, you know that, okay, this character is full of what? Five strokes. So you just put this one and then that's it. You put it together. <laughs> I haven't been to China before. Yeah. <laughs> but I heard when you go to a restaurant, there are snakes and they... Mm. But that's what people say, people who have never been there. Uh -huh. I'm not saying Chinese people don't eat snakes, but um, not everywhere. It's just like a small group of people. Like, let's say you when you come to Ghana, we have the fancies. They eat this particular type of food. So, like, people even say Chinese people eat frogs and all that. Uh -huh. It's not, I'm not saying it's not true, but not everyone. It's, not it's just, it's it's just not like... the whole of China. No, it's just like a small group of people. Really? A small you know, that's the reason I don't want to go to China. Uh, I don't no, want to walk into a restaurant no, no. and I see snakes in a cage no, somewhere. No, no, no. I'm, it's I'm just, it's just in, and you can only find that even in the southern part of China. Oh, really? It's okay. just a small place. Like, I went to China, I lived in China for six years. I never saw, like, people eating snakes or eating okay. frogs or anything. Okay. Yeah. Good. So <laughs> now that changes. So now, how then you started... You, you learned the language yeah. and you, you, you got a degree. Yeah. What did you get a degree in? Aeronautics. Aeronautics. Yeah. So you know how planes fly. Yeah, I, I know how planes yeah. fly. Like I actually did the, how do you call it, the design. Uh -huh. Like we were designing the aircraft wings. Uh -huh. That's what we, I started working on. Okay. But later along the line, I just felt like, you know what, I don't belong here. I, okay. I just feel like doing something that impact the world. I mean, designing of planes... People already doing it. Yeah. So I had so to. So then, how did you get into? How do you transition from um, uh, planes, aeronautics, uh, into videos? So when I was in school doing aeronautics, at the same time I was making videos, but okay. it was just a campus experience, like me living in China, just sharing my experience, my daily experiences in China to people. Mm -hmm. So from there, 
my father was kind of mad like i don't want to see my son doing this kind of things you know how can you be in china and be joking and most of my videos were with women you know where ah, uh, <laughs> see the truth is finally <laughs> coming out the truth has fun <laughs> ladies and gentlemen if you're watching this the truth the real reason why would Maya does his video is because uh, of women no. <laughs> Is your girlfriend listening to this? Do you have a girlfriend? Yeah, I have a girlfriend right and now. And she's listening to this? Uh, definitely. She will. Li she lives Defin in Ghana? No, she lives in Kenya. She lives in Kenya? Yeah. And she's Kenyan? Yeah. Okay, so you're a fancy guy dating a Kenyan guy. Yeah, right now. a Kenyan girl. Yeah. Wow. All right. We'll come back and we'll get into how you met and all that stuff. Because, uh, and what's her name, by the way? Oh, her name? Uh -huh. Trudy. Trudy. Yeah. Trudy. You know, I don't know if you knew that secret, that the reason, <laughs> the whole reason why you started all this video is because of women. But, you know, we all done that when yeah. we're at that age. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. This is Diaspora Weekly. As the national regulator of the communications industry in Ghana, the National Communications Authority seeks to ensure an environment that is safe and fair for consumers and service providers. NCA grants licenses and authorizations for operation of communication systems and services, develops guidelines to streamline communication activities, establish and monitor quality of service indicators for operators and service providers. NCA is in eight regions, Nakra, Tamale, Takradi, Kum Masi, Ho, Kufaridua, Sunyani, and Bolgatanga. Do you have unresolved complaints with your service providers? Contact us on 0800 0307-011419 between the hours of 8 o'clock a.m. and 5 o'clock p.m. from Monday to Friday or visit our website at www.nca.org.gh and follow the procedure for filing a complaint or submitting inquiry. National Communications Authority Communications for Development. Hello and welcome back to Diaspora Weekly. My name is Jermaine Nkrumah. You're on Diaspora Network Television. And we're having a nice conversation with um, Woody Meyer. Yeah. Woody Meyer, what's your real name? That's your YouTube name. That's my YouTube name. What's your real name? Kobna Akon. Kobna Akon. Yeah. Okay. So where did Woody Meyer come from? What am I, uh, um, in, in China, mm. when I was living in the northern part of China, mm. and the word Ayamaya, mm -hmm. it means, literally means, oh my God. But mm. um, where I was living, they don't believe that God exists. So okay. Maya is just like mom. Mm -hmm. So instead of like, oh my God, we say Ayamaya. So you can say Ayawadamaya. What means like my. So okay. Ayawadamaya means, oh my mom. Okay. Or instead of like literally, oh so my god. I? So like starting a whole YouTube, my dad was like I said, my dad was against the YouTube whole thing. Mm -hmm. But my mom would be on the phone telling me that you know what? Just slow it down. But I like what you do, but just slow it down. So my mom was just giving me the feedback and trying to convince my dad and all that. Until my dad agreed. So when my dad agreed, I changed my whole YouTube name. My YouTube name was not what am I? The YouTube name was my own name. Then I changed I was living in China. Mm -hmm. What am I is a catchy phrase, okay. which literally means my mom. So my YouTube channel name is just... So are you closer to your mom than your dad? Or? Very, very close. Very close. Very close. Okay. Is it because your dad was mostly against what you wanted to <laughs> no, do? No, you know, like the boys in the family are always connected to the mom more than... Well, that was the natural connection. Yeah, but, so, but um, you know, my mom has been... A backbone of everything that okay. I do. So literally, I connect more with my okay. mom than my dad. We think you are an example, an example to the youth. Yeah. Do you see yourself an example to the youth? Um, right now, I would say yes, because um, I've seen the number of people that I've inspired, the number of people who are actually. Some of them say you want to be like you, but I always tell you that no, you can't be like me. You can't even be better than me, uh, because. When I started this, even myself, I never thought I'm going to be this far. But with positivity and um, the mindset of me knowing that I need to succeed, mm -hmm. that's what brought me this far. So I keep on sharing my experiences to people. You can also do it to stop the short way of becoming rich. Because when I was based in China, a lot of people were doing this fraud and all that. Mm -hmm. I lived in China for four years. I paid for my fees from first year to final year. My dad paid my fees for just the first semester. The rest, till I graduated, mm -hmm. I paid for everything 
how'd no. you get how did you make it good so living in china you everybody like who lives in china knows that you can teach english to make money so okay. teaching english is not like um, a professional job in china you can literally teach english to kids who are trying to learn basic english so if you know basic english hello how are you that's it you can make money in china so yeah. i was teaching english whilst i was going to school also um at some point in time I was a very good mathematician, so I, like I did calculus. My calculus is really strong. So I was teaching Chinese student in my university, and that money okay. alone okay. can pay for my. Okay, time out. Yeah. We know that Chinese can be very good in math. Yeah. And you left Ghana. Yeah. Not with a university degree. No. With a high school degree. Yeah. And you went to China. Yeah. And you're te teaching Chinese people calculus. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, let me run that by me again. <laughs> you went from Africa. Yeah. Without a college degree. No. Went to China. Yep. And you're teaching Chinese people uh, calculus. I was teaching calculus to pilot students. Pilot students they at, the, at what to, level? Like, um, so let, I'll say it's level 200. Really? Level 200 where they wanted to be pilot. So you have to um, study for two years uh -huh. and then you're going to study the extra two years mm -hmm. abroad. And then before you come back to be a certified pilot or something. Okay. So I was in the university, I was in my third year. Mm -hmm. And then with the result that I have, I qualified to, to, I mean, to teach them. And most of them don't even understand the english aspect so you were using english to teach them calculus because if a chinese professor is teaching them definitely it's going to use like chinese yeah but they are going to leave the country to australia usa and um so canada you them so you english. teach them calculus the english way okay. and that's it so let me go back to your father not wanting you basically he was inhibiting you do you see uh, a parallel between you and your father's relationship and the relationship that currently exists between young people in Africa and their leadership? Um, I would say that when you're growing up in an African home, mm -hmm. our parents always want to detect for us, mm -hmm. and which I believe that that education system needs to be changed. Because like the kid that is growing up has something that in him that he feels like, I can achieve this. But our parents want us to be doctors, medical, medical doctors, engineers, and all that. So in my father's mind, I have to finish school and become an aircraft engineer. But when I was in school, I realized that, you know what? I have the brain to learn this, but I feel like I can do this better than what I really want to achieve. You know what? So I'm just going to do this just for my father. Mm -hmm. I was just in school studying because Fine. my dad wants me to be that. Fine, I get that. But exactly. do you see... Um, the leadership in Africa, when I talk about leadership, I'm talking about DC, yeah. MPs, mm. mayors, uh, regional ministers, presidents, and everything. How do you think, as a young man mm. who has really been able to do something for mm. yourself in such a short period of time, yeah. what word do you have to say to them, the political leadership? I would say that mm -hmm. they should think about the people, mm -hmm. like this is just coming straight from the heart. Mm -hmm should think about the people more than themselves. How do they do that? No, because it's, you see, I, we all know if that MP in my neighborhood who was looking for the chance to become a, to represent us in the parliament, we know that he has a one room house or mm -hmm. we are, he has two bedroom house. Mm -hmm. And then when he comes to power, within two years, he builds a mansion Mm -hmm. How much are they paying you for you to build that big house in the neighborhood? Because I've seen it myself. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying that it's about time these people think about But they're us. not going to change on them all. Oh, so what yes, do you, what do so that is do? what I'm telling the young Africans that it's time. It's our time. If we don't start fighting for what belongs to us, it will be like a transfer. Mm -hmm. And... I believe that like the mindset that those of us we travel abroad and come back is different from the people that are in here because when you talk to them they don't they don't get it. Like what do you tell them that they don't get? Enough Give me example. Enough yeah. of the partisan politics in Africa. Okay. Enough is enough. My father was an NDC guy. Now I have to grow up to become an NDC guy. Even though I know that 
that MPP guy qualifies than that NDC guy that I'm supporting. But I'm not going to support him because he's not from my party. And this is how I think that the young Africans need to change this kind of mentality to look for people who actually qualifies for the job than the people that they started supporting from childhood days that they know that this guy is not qualified, but because he's supporting that party, I need to vote for him. So basically, I always tell young Africans, yeah, even if we have chance to take in what belongs to us, enough, it's time for us to go there and let the old people rest. They can be behind us and guide us. But, but if, if you have the point, let's say if the government was, uh, if, if the government called a town hall meeting, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. Uh, a dialogue between young people and their leadership, mm -hmm. right? Well, if you go there and you speak like that, they will say, "We're well, inside here. You're, you're rude." That, that is that is that is how they train us mm -hmm. in order for us not to stand up against what they do. So when you come in here, so many people are quiet. So many people have put like uh, you know. I don't want to say use the word slavery, but I would say that whatever that is going on right now, we're timid in our African countries. Just like another slavery. Okay, so I think what you're describing is timidity. You, exactly. you, you just want to be yeah. quiet. You know, look look at what they're doing. But, okay. but, but you see, uh, I will say this. If you had a choice between, uh, to choose between two women okay. to date or to marry, okay. one of them is outspoken. She speaks her mind. If you say something she doesn't agree, she'll let you know. The other one uh, is like, oh, I agree, and everything. Which one would you choose? I would choose the one, the outspoken one. You would choose the outspoken That's... one. Do you know how many African men would choose uh, the other one? Yeah, because... Oh, Nehonjo. Uh, yes. And that, that is the system that we need to change. <laughs> okay. No, I mean, like, from what I've learned so far mm -hmm. during my journeys in Africa, mm -hmm. even if you go to certain African countries, mm -hmm. you identify a problem, mm -hmm. and you talk about it, the people living in the country will come and attack you. Yeah. That's an African problem. Because you're, you're painting them in a bad in light. In a bad... But that is the truth. Have uh, you watched the movie Coming to America? With I Eddie Murphy? Eddie Murphy, but I, I was, I was very was young, young when I, when I okay. watched that movie. He was presented with one girl earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, she asked, he asked her, do you like music? She said, yes. What kind of music like she say? Whatever kind of music you like, it's like <laughs> everything. Exactly. You know, how how do you even? Quite frankly, this is an African thing that I don't understand. Mm. A woman who does that to me is not even attractive. But at the end of the day, our culture says that you should go for the woman who's calm and quiet and will not give you any problems. So maybe that's what has permeated into the relationship between young people and our leadership. And that is why the continent is still mm -hmm. this way. Okay. And if we really want to change the face of the continent or we really want to change the way the world sees the continent, it has to start from us, the young Africans. It's time for us to wake up. We are, most of us are sleeping. And we are comfortable with the life of, that we're living right now. So you, you've been out there. Exactly. You're outspoken. Exactly. You've done enough for yourself. Exactly. You're 24. Yeah. If uh, if if you get to the minimum wage, uh, the minimum age where you qualify to run for office, and you try to run for local council or district assembly and mm. everything, mm. what are people your age going to tell you? People my age right now. Yeah, if you want to run for political office, what would I, they tell you? I believe that most of them will tell me that. I, I don't think. I, I think people will support. Yeah. I believe that people will support, especially a young guy like me. And if you're running against someone like me who's much older, what do you think they'll say? I don't respect. Yeah, like, there's, there's, respect. there's no respect. Oh, wait the, for your time. Yeah, oh, it's this not, man yeah. is experienced, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But I think the reason why I'm spending time on this is this. I truly believe in young people in, exactly. in, in Africa. But I think we're not grabbing it. We're not challenging the old. You see what I'm saying? It's because of our culture. It, it, so our, our, our culture has a role to play. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying, that the diaspora mm -hmm. coming back have a different mindset than the people that were living on the continent that never got a chance to, I mean, go anywhere. And, and you see, okay, 
this is a conversation. And I understand it's okay. When when I was when I was living under my father's roof, mm. I told him after asking him so many times to teach me how to drive the car, and mm. he wouldn't. Mm. One day I said, "I'm not washing it anymore if you don't teach me." And guess what? Eventually, one day he gave me the key. He didn't teach me. He gave me the key, and I drove the car. My older brother was there. He didn't give him the key. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, in, I think we have uh, a, an adage that says, when, when, right? Mm. Young people are not complaining about the kind of haircut they are getting. You know, and that's why they always end up with a bad haircut. That's what I'm saying. It's the mm. way they, we grew up. Mm -hmm. We're not meant to speak against it. That's the old. diagnosis. So exactly. what are we going to do? I'm putting you on a spot because no, no. you've been there. You've exactly. done a lot for yourself. Exactly. What should young people do to uh, overcome this culture? Me, like, like I said, it's mm -hmm. time for us to wake up. Mm -hmm. wake, wake up. It's not about violence or anything. Mm -hmm. But, you know, even in Ghana, it's in the law to protest. Okay. We can come together and say this law or this thing is not good. Mm -hmm. We have to protest against mm -hmm. it. But now, this is a situation that partisan politics have divided all of us. Okay. You understand? So bringing people together to fight for a common goal okay. is not even working because he support that party. It's this government that is in power. Okay. But his government is doing something that is not good. Right. I'm, I'm not... I don't want to let the young people... I mean, the way party has divided us. You go to Facebook, here yeah, and go and see any post about maybe MPP, NDC. They'll be fighting each other in the comment section. Okay. How do you convince these people that are fighting each other against, uh, because of political party All to right, tell them so let's fight for this common goal? Some will say, some will say that in developed countries, there's still partisan politics. Exactly. And they're able to rise beyond it. Exactly. Before we go on the next segment, which we have a few minutes uh, to go on a break, I want to talk to you about leadership because okay. you've been around Africa a lot. Mm. Tell me about what your own personal impression of leadership in Africa. I mean, leadership at the highest level. What's your impression? My impression when it comes to leadership in Africa, I, I don't like. I, I might, if I should be honest, mm -hmm. maybe people might say that I'm disrespecting people, but. Um, as long as you, <laughs> as long as you use decent, non-insulting <laughs> language, but you speak your mind, because you hear you are, uh, we're saying that mm -hmm. young people should learn to speak their mind. You yeah. have the opportunity now. What do you think about leadership in Africa? Uh, we still have a long way to go. Okay. When it comes to leadership in Africa. Okay. Uh, because there's so many things that are going on, like it's not right. Okay. Because. Um, I've been to countries, let's say, I lived all my life in Asia. Mm -hmm. So let's say, like, going to countries in Asia, seeing what's going on. And a country like Ghana will go to China to borrow money to come and build a particular, maybe a house or maybe, an, uh, how do you call it, uh, like a road, and you have to borrow from Japan. You don't think there's something wrong with our leadership? We don't have... Like I was saying, we don't have leaders. We don't have leaders on this continent. Just let me be honest. See, I don't want to like disrespect mm -hmm. because leaders are like servants. Leaders in Africa. If 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 no, I mean, if you're a leader, you have to serve the people. You're okay. like servant to us. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to Africa, it's swapped. Okay. That's the honest truth. Okay. Like our leaders are not our servant. They are the other way around. They are lords. Exactly. Okay. So if we have leaders that serves us, mm -hmm. we are able to speak our mind. We are able to, like, do this for us. I mean, you, have, you serve me. I need water. You have to give me water. And the thing that makes me so sad is, like, a whole country, president, commission, commission a road and say that I've built a road. I've built a school. These are basic necessities that everyone who pays tax needs to enjoy. But this is the situation that when it comes to Africa, he will build a public toilet and then go and call people to commission a public <laughs> toilet. There is something wrong with our leadership in Africa. And this is something that I just want young Africans to see and say that, no, enough of this. But this is the time that, you, okay, let's organize something. Let's protest against what is happening. It's not like violence, 
You pr Black Lives Matter. They were, and let me just bring this in. The main reason why black Americans are crying, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, is because African lives doesn't matter right now. Our homes are not strong. If you think Africa is way too strong right now, <laughs> black Americans or maybe people in the diaspora cry, Black Lives Matter, I have a home. I have a home in here. So if something is wrong, they will definitely come in here. So if you tell me that we have leadership, I'm so sorry. I love African leaders. I mean, I know what you guys are doing. You're trying your best. But please, if you're a leader, know that you are a servant, not a lord. You understand? So this, for me, I'll say that. So if a guy goes into public office, like you said. Exactly. With two-bedroom shack somewhere. Yeah. And the moment he gets into office, he's driving a Rolls Royce. Definitely, there's something wrong. Why are we not asking questions? And we are quiet. I, let me tell you something. I went to Liberia. Okay. The new president of Liberia. George Weah. George Weah. So when I went to Liberia, I was doing a video in the country. The videos that I do, I try to show the positive image of every country that I go to. So I was looking for nice places and all that. Then... They took me to a place. When they took me there, it's like a, a coastal line, and someone is building a mansion. It's like, wow, I need to put this on camera. And they're like, I oh, know, it's for the president. I was like, for how long? He was a footballer, a successful footballer. Can you show me the house that he used to live in before that? Well, I mean, in his case, he didn't make, he played football. No. Football is actually a way to go from rags to riches. Yes, but mm -hmm. they went to show me the house that he was living in before he became president. Ah, okay. Oh, my okay. goodness. If you're a, a successful footballer and you couldn't build this house, but right now he became a politician or a president and you're building this house. And it was the, it wasn't the presidential mansion, it was his own His own house. Okay, all and right. Which means there is something wrong. Okay. All but right. we can't say anything right now. Very good. Okay, um, we'll go on a quick break. When we come back, the final segment, we're going to talk about your videos and Thank your you. travels around Africa. Africa. Thank you. This is Diaspora Weekly. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Would you buy anything without first knowing exactly what the product was and how it could benefit you? Definitely not. Neither should you vote for your next member of parliament without knowing who they are and how they plan to solve your problems. Watch the next MP only on Diaspora Network Television and find out the men and women who want to represent you in parliament. The next MP only on DNT. We wake up every morning to different stories from politics, business, sports, and entertainment. These stories, one way or the other, affect our lifestyle and dealings with family, friends, and business associates. Your take on Diaspora Network Television gives you an opportunity to have your take on these pertinent issues via phone in and messages to our social media platforms, DNT Ghana on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If it's an important trending story, we will definitely talk about it. Your take with me, Yalsechi, coming soon on DNT. Welcome back. This is Diaspora Weekly. My name is Jermaine Nkrumah, and we're joined by Woody oh Maya. Woody, yeah. your videos are like the hardest thing on YouTube. <laughs> when I look at your numbers, I'm like, geez, uh, how, how long would it take for me to get these numbers? You put videos and people just love them. Why do you think that is? Um, I feel like it's the brand. Okay. Um, the way I grew the, the brand because I brought people together. It takes a lot of like hard work. Because like I said, to get all these numbers, it has to take me like five years to get okay. these numbers. So it's constant hard work and also consistency. And I feel like that was what brought the numbers because I, I never imagined. So you, know. you were eating in a gutter in Rwanda. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Were you really eating? I was eating in the gutter. And you were sitting in a gutter yeah, exactly. eating? Exactly. So basically, I don't plan my videos. And um, I don't do research before I go to a particular country because I want everything to be like first impression. So when I went to Rwanda for the first time, I was blown away. Like I was asking myself, is this Africa? 
because I, I never knew that there's an African country that you can walk through the entire country without seeing a rubber on the floor. I was amazed, like, is this Africa? So I went... I and he said there are no street hawkers. There's no street hawkers in Rwanda. What would happen if I try to sell... Because, see, our street hawking, I can leave from work, and if I need toilet paper, if I need... Uh, by the time I get home, I finish up, and I don't have to get my car. Yeah. Get out of my car. What's wrong with that? Uh, nothing like that <laughs> exists in Rwanda. It's like a crime if you do that. Really? It's a crime. Wow. So people obey it. Mm. Like the law actually works in Rwanda, okay. and the corruption is. I would say, I would say, I don't say corruption don't exist, but it's very it's low, very, minimal. very, very well, low. How do you get arrested so many times? <laughs> I mean, what what is it like to be arrested in a different country? Yeah. So, but I mean, we can talk about. <laughs> no, we can talk about it. It's, not a, it's not criminal. It's not, it's right? not, yeah. So getting arrested, mm -hmm. I, you know, even if I go to a country and I don't get arrested, people are like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> really? Wow, what, what happened to you this time? Really? You're not arrested this time? Because uh, when you, you travel to different countries, uh -huh. uh, we'll be filming, like uh -huh. using cameras. And um, I don't do that type of um, vlogging where you go to the it forest does, yeah. or maybe you want to see animals and all that. No, because these are what the white people have been showing. So if people living out of Africa, they think that Africa is full of animals. Mm -hmm. And my type of video is trying to show that we also have cities. Mm -hmm. So I normally walk in the cities. So that's taking a good my thing. Why would they arrest Exactly. You? And I've been arrested like almost like so many times. In, in some countries, like they, they said I'm a terrorist. Like in Zambia. Just because you're filming? Because I was filming in Nigeria. I was just on my laptop in the car. Edits because I used to edit my videos by myself. So after shooting, I sit in the car to edit the videos before I get home. Mm -hmm. And I continue. I was just in the car and they said, oh yeah, Yahoo boy. I got arrested in Yahoo Nigeria. Boy. Yahoo is boy is like those people who do oh, internet, internet scamming. So that's how I got arrested in Nigeria. Um, which country again? South Africa. South Africa, it was one of the worst arrests ever. It was like a ram robber where so many cars are following, police cars are following you. Literally, I went, I was in a hotel. Um, I met a Chinese friend that I used to be in China with. And she is now based in South Africa. So I was just, we had a meeting and then I was going. And then I called the Uber and the girl left. That's it. They called the police on me. I'm using the West African accent. They arrested me For, just because, just because uh, West, I have a West African accent. So what I did was um, I already have a message from the tourism board. So they came, they arrested me. Where, where are the drugs? Where are this thing? They took my phone. They seized everything that I have. They seized it. Is it because of your lifestyle or what? And the thing is like, I, I, you I don't, don't live flashy. I don't, I, don't, I don't live flashy because, you know, this are, these are the kind of mentality that Africans have. Like, I, I don't even understand. Like in South Africa, they, where are the drugs? Like they arrested me, but they, they were, haven't. They don't maltreat you, though. Oh, sometimes. They yeah, beat South, you. South Africa, I was like South Africa. The only thing that saved me was the message that I got from the tourism board, and now they got to know that this guy is a celebrity or something, and now they were scared. Like, please don't report us to anyone, please. And I was after like, you beat me, uh, after oh ah, my like, I was like, these guys. So you know, like traveling in Africa, I would say that when I was traveling in Asia. I had so much freedom than traveling in my own continent. Uganda, I was deported because I was holding a camera. And Kenya too? In Kenya, I was arrested because I was holding a camera. It, it, but it, but if, a, a, if a white guy comes, they don't a Chinese do that. guy doing the same thing that you're doing on the continent, he doesn't get arrested. That's self-hate. It's too much on the continent. You have no idea. Like Sometimes I feel like giving up, but when I see... The messages, the comment from the people, mm -hmm. these are the things that keeps me moving. Like traveling for the first time, you get into a country, you're trying to promote the country, and you get arrested. For promoting from the country. From promoting the country. And, and, okay, so when they arrest you, do they, what are, so, a typical conversation that goes on? So, so basically, first time I got arrest. arrested was Kenya, and they thought I was a tourist. Like, that was how they got, they said, where are you from? I said, I'm from Ghana. Where is your passport? I said, my passport is in my hotel. And um, they said, why would you leave your passport? And I, when, even when I was coming to the country, I didn't even need visa to enter. So why would I be walking around with my passport? Mm -hmm. So 
like because I was not having my passport, they said I'm a Nigerian, claiming that I'm a Ghanaian because they said Nigerians have been doing so many things in there. But the main reason why they arrested me was the crime that I was having. They said they had a, a terrorist attack. And they, they, how was it called? Um, there's a there's a there's a group Wait, of people. Uh -huh. But terrorists are mostly. They they will hide to do whatever they yeah. want to do, and then what actually saved me was my Chinese resident permit. How can a, a Chinese, Chinese resident, resident permit, permit save, save me in, in Africa? <laughs> I, I, if if you tell people, they'll be like, uh, are you sure what he's saying? I was like, yeah. And then there's a time that people never believe my story until I met a UN ambassador mm -hmm. in, uh, what do you call it, uh, in Uganda when I was being harassed at the airport mm -hmm. because of my camera. And the ambassador got there and said, do you guys know this guy? Why are you treating like the man watched my videos in China to my whole trip? And I was like, you guys want to put yourself into trouble. They said they don't care. They took him to the CID guy who was supposed to interrogate me and all that. The guy got me open. It was in a dark room. They took me there. I was there waiting for the person to come interrogate me and all that in Africa, bro. And then they switched on the light. The man saw my face. It's like, what am I? <laughs> what are you doing in my office? And this is the second time something like this has happened to me. One was in Uganda and one was in Zambia. Zambia. So in Uganda, I know that if it was not that guy, you I don't know where you. I would end up. You understand? Do you, do you get disappointed if you don't get arrested in a country? <laughs> Because it seems like it, it, it has become so normal. If you yeah, get into anyway, a country, yeah, you would have been arrested. It's it, it just like something that I'm used to it right now. I remember when I was going to Mozambique, that was my last country. When I was going to Mozambique from Swaziland to Mozambique, I got there. The Kenyans need visa to enter Mozambique. As a Ghanaian, mm -hmm. it's visa free for me. Can you imagine? When I got there, they said it's visa free for uh, the Kenyans. But for me, I need to go back to Accra or I need to go back to Swaziland before I enter the country. So I need to get a visa. And I was like, what are you telling me? I opened the, the internet, checked hey, everything. Charging. Everything is visa free, bro. Give me my visa. Let me enter the country. Mm -hmm. I stayed there for like an hour. And they told me, if you don't want to go back, you can sleep here. And then one of the immigration officers came and said that, you know what? Are you Nigerian? I said, I'm not Nigerian. If from West Africa, I'm from West Africa. I was like, that is why this our immigration officer has something to do with West Africans. He doesn't like them. So please, we have another border, which is like another border, like, which is like two hours away from here. And can you imagine? It was 6 p.m. And we came with the tourism board. They already left. So now I have to find a way to get to, to, that. Get to that. And we have and we had to beg somebody to put us behind his trunk, like a car. The man was, the woman was going to another side, so we had to be in the trunk, like behind, I have a video on it, like we just be behind the car, and then he took us, she took us to another border. So what does this say about we Africans? We don't like each other. We hate ourselves. That's, that's, that's the truth, because I, I, I know a situation where you be with a Chinese person, because I, I speak Chinese, so most of the time, when I travel, I get Chinese people living in so many countries. You go with them, they will be going free. And then you as an African... Within Africa. Within Africa. It's not only uh, Zambia? No, oh, within, within, within Africa. Like, because I, every country that I go to, I definitely know one Chinese person there. Because I was actually doing shows when I was in China, on Chinese TVs, in Chinese. So I know more people, you know. So whenever I come back here, maybe once a time, I meet one Chinese friend and all that. You go somewhere with a Chinese person, that Chinese person will go scot-free. And you as a black man in your own continent, you will face the trouble than the Chinese man. And it's so sad. Okay. I mean, the more you speak, the more angry I get. Where do you see Africa going? Are we going in the right direction or are we going in the wrong direction? I feel like we still colonize. We still have that colonial mentality, mm -hmm. the division of countries. Uh, like, the division, like, we are divided. Like, look at the United States. They have different states, but they still come back. They still form United States of America. And this is how Africa needs to be. Do you think we be. can ever form United and States that, of Africa? I mean, I wish, but it's not going to happen anytime soon. Why? Because the self-hate, you have no idea. 
like when you go into the country that's when you see that the self-hate in africa is way too much like somebody will see you you're from ghana or you're from nigeria i don't want to get close to you why because of the country you're coming from it's it's happening i'm telling you it's happening on the continent like there's so many places that we went to. Which country? What, what if you wanted to go make a presentation to the African Union about this? This is what... Because I'm when they meet in uh, Addis Ababa, their fellow leaders, oh, hey, how are you doing? But, exactly. But meanwhile, within their countries, people hate each other. And this is what I've been working on. I, I really want to speak my mind because right now, I would say that I represent a lot of Africans right now. So I'm actually looking forward to get the chance to tell them why... They should even disintegrate the whole African Union because it's not functioning. Like, how can I get deported in, in Zambia because I've overstayed for one day? <laughs> it's sad. Would a Chinese man in Zambia be uh, deported would, for even, in one Even day? me overstaying in China for one day, they would tell me, yo, go and extend your visa. Maybe you have to pay for that day. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. But in Africa... Go back to your country. I'm sorry. Wow. I'm sorry. Go back to your country. This is something, this is really new to me because I know I haven't been to as many African countries as yeah. you have been. I've just tr driven through Togo, Benin to Nigeria. That's it. I don't know any other African country. <laughs> but it, it seems strange to me that if I go to Senegal, I'll feel like I've gone home. I mean, why should that be the... This what? is this is how, this is how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Like going to every African country, you should see yourself that you are not different from them. You are not, because some of the countries, when you go, some people might start even speaking their languages with you no, without knowing that yeah. you are from Ghana. Yeah. Until you open up your, you open your mouth and they will know that, oh, you're not from here, where are you from, and that kind of thing. This is how it's supposed to be. So when people dislike West Africans, is it because of, are they picking on Nigerians or Ghanaians? Or they, we, we all come to, like, you know, Ghana and Nigeria are like brothers. So if Nigeria does something, it affect Ghana. If Ghana does something, it affect Nigerians. Like my West African passport has given me so many troubles traveling in Africa. So like when I go to the border, uh, South Africa, when I landed in South Africa, mm -hmm. the first day I landed, I gave them my passport. They said, step aside. The people that I paid their flight ticket to get to South Africa, those are my crew, they got a chance to enter. And they were from where? Kenya. Okay, they entered. But me, that... Oh Did my they God. not tell them that you are their boss and that you paid for their trip? The, it, the return ticket, everything, I have it. It's on my phone. But I didn't even ask them that, hey, where is your return ticket? Where are you staying? Go. Oh. Everything is on my phone. <laughs> their return tickets are on your phone, not on their phone. Their return ticket, where they're going to sleep, Everything is on my phone. So I had to go first so that I'll be able to tell them that this people And they are, asked you to step aside. And they told me, passport, check, West Africa, step aside. aside. And then they had the, the, the Kenyan And the people. Kenyans and the two Kenyans, they, they, they stepped in. <laughs> and it took me like 30 minutes. And then this guy, I got mad and I just went to him. If you don't want me to enter the country, tell me to go back home. I don't, I'm not coming to mind gold in here check my because that passport i was using is even new i have two passports that is already full that i showed him and he's like i don't trust west africans in front of my face that's what he said that's what he said in front of my face and i was like you know what wow i'm just gonna go and get out that's it all right you already you've been you've been awesome uh i, I love the fact that you're projecting africa uh, positively, mm. but in, it's almost like, it, it, you know, people don't get mad at me, but I'm going to mention Jesus Christ's name. Jesus Christ came to save us, and yet we crucified him, okay? I'm not equating you to Jesus, Jesus. but I don't <laughs> stretch out the imagination, but it sounds to me that for someone who buys his own camera, pays for crew to go from one African country to another to promote those countries, the kind of troubles that you go through, the arrest and everything, it really speaks to the type of people that we Africans are, which is that we don't respect our own. That's it. When are we ever going to get it that our own is good enough? 
But when a white man come, when a Chinese man come, we salute them, we open the door for him. But when our brother comes here, not to steal, not to steal like others come in to steal, he's coming to project your country in a good light to the world. So that a doctor from the United States can say, look, if you've traveled to this because of you, I want to come to Africa. Is this the type of person that we want to arrest and harass? Africans, sit up. This has been Diaspora Weekly, and my name has been Jermaine Nkrumah. And man, I am inspired by you. I Thank wish you I had done a quarter of what you've done <laughs> at your age. Thank and you. And so I really want to thank you for joining us. Thank you so okay? much for having me. Very good. Appreciate it. Very good. Diaspora Weekly with Amaya. <laughs>